Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Before we get started, please click subscribe to my channel to keep up with all of my latest personal finance and investing content. And please check out the link you see on your screen for a message from my sponsor, The Motley Fool, where you can get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. You know, I have never looked at this as a dividend stock, but it pays a 3.0% dividend yield today. So I, I think that's really attractive for a business that I just don't see how they get disrupted over the next at least five, maybe 10 years. So this is the company that makes most of the chips that go into things like iPhones, uh, MacBooks now, they make NVIDIA's chips, basically the bleeding edge chip foundry in the world and the advantage that they have over a incumbent like, in, like Intel, who was really the company they disrupted is they just focus on the foundry business. They're not designing chips the way that Intel is. So they're, they're not vertically integrated. They're more horizontally integrated. They're buying equipment from companies like ASML who they say, Hey, you do that best. You keep, you know, specializing in that piece of the business. We will be, we will happily pay hundreds of millions of dollars for a piece of equipment from you. But you know, we want to be kind of at the front of the line uh, when, when those new pieces of equipment come out. So that's how they stay on the bleeding edge. Now with the moves in China, with basically the U S saying, we want to try to keep some of this bleeding edge chip technology out of China. I think that actually gives Taiwan semiconductor more of an advantage. They're going to be able to, you know, probably expand a little bit around the world. They're building, uh, I think one or two plants in the U S maybe not quite the same level as what they have in Taiwan right now, but this is just the kind of business that I think the business model is so much better than what Intel had, you know, a decade or two decades ago. And it takes so long for a company like Intel, if they are going to catch up, it's, we're not even going to know that they're caught up until, you know, middle of the, the decade or maybe end of the decade. So I, I love the business. I love where they're sitting. It takes a ton of money to build the foundries that they're building. That's their competitive moat is that they have tens, hundreds of billions of dollars of capital in the ground. So I'll take that 3% dividend yield all day and, and expect it to slowly grow over time. I like that one. It's not a space I'm terribly familiar with. So that's one I need to put on my radar. I feel like I'd, I have a lot of tech exposure in my portfolio, but not of the dividend paying variety. So I feel like that's a good candidate to maybe change that with. Well, and the stock has come down so much over the last year. Uh, I'm just trying to look at the stock chart here. It, the stock has pulled back in such a way that it, it has put it much more on my radar because, you know, it's not necessarily a company that you want to pay a huge multiple for. This isn't, this isn't a tech company that's, you know, low capital spend. It's actually really high capital spend. So you want to get, get it in that value range where you're getting a good dividend, a good price to earnings multiple. And I think we're there now and that's what has, has made it much more attractive to me. So I will go into my last one which is probably the riskiest of the six, as it's, especially from a near-term volatility perspective. It's a company called EPR Properties. And the market really soured on this one lately. And it's not a surprise. Roughly half or about 40% of their revenue comes from movie theater properties. They're a real estate company. Their two top tenants are AMC, which definitely got a reprieve from all the memes, meme stock traders. They, they kind of got bailed out there. Um, and Regal. Regal's parent company just filed for bankruptcy. They have about, I think, 57 of a, of EPR's theater properties out of about 170 are leased to Regal. Um, so understandably, it's a concern. The company also owns about the other 60% of its rent comes from experiential properties in, of other varieties. Uh, Topgolf is its biggest non-theater tenant. Mm -hmm. um, it, it leases a lot of uh, water parks. It has a, the, the Margaritaville in Nashville as an EPR property. Um, there's, there's a lot of resorts, water parks, ski resorts, Vail resorts is a major tenant of theirs. Um, so the, the other 60% is solid, very solid businesses, things, people that clearly want to get out and do the theater part. The company kind of put this, you know, gave me a lot of, you know, relief in its earnings report when it said that Regal has paid in October and November for all 57 of its properties. They paid rent. Um, they paused payment in September. Uh, as part of they filed bankruptcy in September, so as part of that they they didn't pay rent in September, but they resumed paying October and November on all of their EPR leases. Um, and EPR's theater properties is really important to know are the the cream of the crop. These are 
the big megaplex theaters in big shopping districts. This isn't the abandoned movie, the half abandoned movie theater showing dollar fifty, uh, you know, movies by near your house. So like they could do has, something with these properties, even if it's not a movie theater. Right. And that's the point. It, not only could they do something, there are other operators that would gladly scoop these up if they weren't mm-hmm. occupied by Regal. Um, I'm sure in your area there are those those movie theater chains that will serve you dinner, for example, while you're eating. Mm-hmm. Um, they go by different names wherever you are, but there's a lot of those that would – these are the kind of properties that would appeal to companies like that. So they wouldn't have a big, tough time releasing them, most likely. Um the stock has been just pummeled since Regal's bankruptcy filing, down about 40% since then. Dividend yield is a well-covered 8.5% right now uh, because the stock's been beaten down so bad. It pays monthly dividend payments, that are, and it's just well-covered by the company's FFO. EPR has committed to – it's a sub-$3 billion company. Get this. They've committed to invest $250 million on new developments over the next two years without raising any capital because they're making so much money compared to the dividends they're paying out, which is really rare for a real estate company because they're required to pay out a lot of their taxable income. They're expecting to fund that just with cash flow, not dip into their balance sheet, not to borrow money, not to issue new shares, just with cash flow. And that's a really rare luxury for a REIT to be able to grow like that. So long-term, I'm very bullish on this. To put the drop in the stock in perspective, I'm looking at the price August 15th, 2022, $55.43 per share. As we're recording, this is November 4th, 2022, $38.88. So that's a, what, 30% drop in the stock around about there just in a couple of months on, like you said, the back of Regal's um, bankruptcy and it seems like Regal's paying rent. So that seems really positive. Yeah. I, I like the experiential space. I think maybe not every company is going to make it, but the, the, what I would look at with a company like EPR is can you diversify into enough companies and enough, and, and enough, uh, businesses where, you know, top golf does really well. Maybe one water park doesn't, um, and it doesn't kind of sink your business, but like you said, you're getting an 8.5% dividend yield. That's your kind of flex there. So uh, I, I like it. Sometimes the time to buy a stock is when the market hates it the most. And so this seems like a, a company like that. Yep. I would definitely agree. And it's, it's one that I like long term. Um, even if the, the regal situation doesn't get completely resolved, I still like the stock from a long term standpoint. They're, they're planning on gradually reducing their theater exposure over time. So. All right, let's go through our six top dividend stocks to buy today. I started with MGM Resorts. I had Apple. Both of those are really low dividend yields, but I think over time, these are going to be great dividend growth stocks. And then my final one was Taiwan Semiconductor with a yield of 3%. Matt, what were the three that you had? I had Ally Financial, ticker symbol ALLY, about 4.6% dividend yield. I had Digital Realty Trust. They're a data center operator. They yield about 5.1% last I looked. And EPR Properties is kind of the most speculative, uh, speculative I'd say, out of the six, but not by, you know, not by normal speculative standards. And they pay about 8.5%. And Matt, where can we find your work on YouTube and Twitter? I am Matt Frankel CFP on both YouTube and Twitter. And I am Travis Hoyam on Twitter, H-O-I-U-M, and The Rive Project, R-I-I-V Project uh, on YouTube. So you can find both of our work there. Please give us your comments below. What do you think about these picks? Of course, give this video a like uh, and subscribe to both of our channels. We appreciate it. And we will see you again here next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than three times. So go to fool.com slash Frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 354% as of 9-12-2022 and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 112% as of 9-21-2022.